the opportunity to stand, but he is also the center of my life. For I found out a long time ago, without Jesus on my side, there would be no me. And in the same breath that I say that, if you don't know, without Jesus on your side, as well, there would be no you. Mm -hmm. For he is our everything. Amen. And I think right there we ought to be able to pause and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. And just who he is in our lives. Uh, you know, sometimes if you just think and look back over your life and ask yourself if, if it had not been for God mm -hmm. who was on your side, mm -hmm. ask yourself this morning, where, where would you would be? I be? Amen. If you would think about some of those storms and trials and tribulations that we have been through and we look back over our life now and we recognize it, it was nobody but God. Yeah that has kept us. I don't know about you, but there's been some times when you thought you was about to lose your mind. Mm -hmm. Didn't know if you was going or coming. And right when you thought that you was at the brink of giving up and everything was about to crumble, God stepped in and lifted us up. Let's lose the shot right there. But if you would go with me today, uh, the book of John, the fifth chapter. The fifth chapter of John, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 10. The fifth chapter of John. Verses 1 through 10. And it reads, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, widow, waiting for the moving of the wall. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, and trouble the water. Whosoever did first after the trumping of the water step in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? They put the man and answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepping down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was a Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. If you allow me a few minutes of your time, I would like to speak on this talk. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? We see here in this context this morning that a man has suffered from being blamed for 38 long years. And you ask yourself, ask yourself here this morning, church, and be truthful with yourself. How many of us would have given up by then? 38 long years, you can't walk. And you have sat by a pool waiting on a blessing to come to you. But every time the angel comes and troubles the water, 
someone beats you into the wall. And if you would think about that for a moment, some of us that sit here today that say that we trust God and we believe God. After 38 years, we would have accepted the condition that we were in and said, well, this is just the way God made it. So you see here that some here today on a different level have wrestled with sin in their life. The same way the man wrestled with being lame and could not walk. Some of us today here have wrestled with sin time and time again. And some of us, if truth be told, we have gave in and just said, that I, I can't do any better. This is just the way that I am. Oh, but, but I got news for you today that if when God steps in the picture, no matter how long you've been wrestling with some things, yeah. oh, change is about to come. Yeah. Oh, some, some, somebody ought to shout right there because some of you all know what I'm talking about. When you have wrestled time and time again, God has delivered you from some things and, and you find yourself falling right back into the same rut that God has brought you out of. And when we get like that, sometimes you can hear the devil whisper in your ear and tell you, you might as well just keep doing what you're doing. Oh, sometimes he'll tell you that you're not worthy. And so you might as well just keep on down the path of sin that you're in. Oh, uh, but look at this man here. In this, this few verses here this morning, and in these verses you see that he encountered Jesus. And he didn't even know who he was talking to. Oh, I got to, sometimes I believe some of us really don't recognize who Jesus is in our lives. I think sometimes we just go off what we hear other folks say sometimes. And don't know who Jesus is in our lives. But I see here too that in these verses here that sometimes along the way we have a tendency to make excuses about the condition that we're in. Ask me how I know if you look here in these verses this morning, when Jesus began to speak to the lame man, he asked him here in the verses, he said, but thou be made whole. And if he asked that question, you first need to understand that Jesus already knew the condition the man was in. All right. In the same breath that I say that, Jesus already knew the condition that we're in. Uh -huh. Oh, one thing about it, we can fool folk. But you can't fool Jesus. See, some of us look good on the outside. But sin has ate us up on the inside. And some of us just, we come into the household of faith and we dressed up and we cleaned up. But on the inside, our spirit is troubled. And we don't know sometimes whether we're going or coming. But we have to put on, we feel like sometimes we have to put on an image for folk that we are around. But let me help you here with something. We need to get beyond trying to look good for folk. Because see, one day, this old life that we have is going to be over with. And we're going to face Jesus on judgment. And it's not going to matter what type of clothes you wore at church on Sunday. It's not, it's not going to matter what type of shoes you had on. For folk to look at. It. But Jesus is going to see what your spirit looks like. And even with this man here that was lame, you would think that when someone comes and asks the question, do you want to be made whole? You would think that that should have been shouting news for him right there. But instead of him saying, yes, I want to be made whole. But look here in 7 when he said, I have no man when the world is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming another step down the floor, Jesus didn't ask him not one time why he went home. He asked him, do you want to be made home? Uh, some of us, we're still stuck where we're stuck at now. Because when God steps in, Instead of us 
just answering what God has asked us. We started giving him all type of excuses why we hadn't got it right yet. And God said, I didn't ask you what went on beforehand. I'm here now to help you get it on the right path. And then look here, even with the excuse making, and we know we we know how we are sometimes. God tells us to do one thing. Instead of us just stepping out on faith and doing what God has told us to do, we think of five or six reasons why we didn't do what God told us to do. Well, it was a deep fault because I didn't do what God told me to do. Well, my old sister over here, she didn't ask me to help sing. But God told you to open your mouth and sing. God told you to get up and pray. But you don't move because then nobody asks you. See, we don't put too much emphasis on folk these days. And not an emphasis on God himself. If God tells you to do something, pleasant bro, you, you step out on faith and you do what God tells you to do. Because let me help you here. Because let me hear. Folk will say what they won't say about you. Whether you do it or you don't. See, see, people don't complain about you if, if you're serving God. They don't complain about you. If you stop serving God, they don't complain about you. So ask yourself, if I say that I'm a child of God, why would not I want to serve God in spite of what folk think about me? See, I, I learned a long time ago that you, you, we need to stop this Christian folk. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. Stop trying to be man pleasers. See, we, the church has got so far off bases and we wonder why we lose folk and, and things happen the way they do. The reason it does because we're not seeking out the God no more. We're trying to seek out the people that pat us on our back. Tell us how good of a job you're doing. See, I, I don't need nobody to tell me nothing because when, when, when I was at my lowest, wasn't nobody around to help me. See, see, when I was about to give up on life, when my friends had walked away from and, and, and my family said, there was nothing else they could do for me. See, I didn't have nobody to turn to but God. And so since I know it was God that moved on my behalf, then, then I'm going to give all my praise and all my glory to God. I, I learned to stop trying to entertain folk. The church has got to be an entertainment thing also. Oh, we, we, we can talk about how good people say and how good the prayers went for. But then when the word of God comes forth, everybody gets quiet because, listen, I, I, I heard a preacher say this one time, because here's the thing about God's word. See, it all sometimes, it all prick you every once in a while. See, we, we, we done got to a point in our lives now within the church that we want everything to be so pleasing to our ears. But every once in a while, every once in a while, the word of God ought to convict and when it convicts you, it ought to begin to convert you. But here's the thing. You wonder why. I know y'all are some of here before too. Y'all wonder why folk get mad. They can get mad at the word of God. You, you, you know why they get mad? Because they pricks them. And, and we don't, we don't got to be a generation of folk. We don't like to be pricked. We like to be pleased all the time. So, so when something pricks us, and I'm talking about the word of God, we get offended at the person that stands before us. We get offended at the person that's telling us what they'll say in the law. It, it can come strictly from the word of God, but we we quit to turn and holler, who do they think they are? Well, I'll tell you who I be. I be a man of God. And sometimes, see, when we get convicted, we, 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 we understand what is being told to us is the truth. But here's the part that bothers our spirit. We don't want to be converted. We are listen to that, what you got to say. And it troubles our spirit. And, and this is why you see folks say they're on fire for God. And the very instance that you disagree with them, they hit them double doors and you don't see them no more. Because they, they, they act like and they mad at you and they mad at you because of what you say. But no, they mad at God. See, they're kicking against the prick. Because when the word of God comes to the floor, it's going it's to accomplish what it's set out to do. Now, now here's what messes us up. Can I help you here? Uh -huh. We don't want to receive. See, it goes for But we done made up in our mind what we think is right. Oh, yeah, that's what we do. We don't want to be made whole. We just want to be halfway. And when I say halfway, as long as they ain't going nowhere. 
I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pay my tithes. The only thing is going away. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to praise God. But the every is that somebody called me out on some wrongdoing or speak on my sin. I don't want to hear that talk. You, you, you know, it's, it's so amazing to me how we say we love one another. But we keep receipts of others' wrongdoing. As soon as you begin to share the truth with them, they start trying to tell you about what they know about you. What if you know something is wrong with you? And you say that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Why are you keeping receipts instead of praying for them? Because see, we need to understand that we need each other on this journey. Oh, it ain't no big eyes and little views. I don't care what your title is on from the pulpit to the back door. We all need each other. A pastor needs his congregation. The congregation needs their pastor. And, and we got to learn how to coincide with each other. If we're willing to do the will of God, I, I tell my church sometimes, I say, look at him. As the pastor, if I have to take a back seat to some things, for the edification of the body of Christ, I'll do that just that. But see, we don't got so consumed with titles and everything else that we feel like it has to be our way. Or it's nobody's way. You know, it's, it's so amazing to me that how we as a body of believers Christian folk allow the smallest little things to disrupt our relationship with God. We think it's about each other. But things that go on in the household of faith disrupts our relationship with God. Let me show you something. How many of y'all here work? Been in a job a long time, haven't you? Every day is not a good day, is it? Some days your supervisor get on your nerves, don't they? Sometimes they change rules that you don't agree with. You grumble a little bit about it, but you get up and you go to work. But watch this hit. When it comes to the household of faith, you get in the household of faith, somebody tells you something that you can't do. You get offended, and you say, I ain't coming back. Oh, what happened? Or else I'm going to go over here and fellowship over here. I don't like what they say to me over there. Can I help you here? You can go wherever you want to go. What you don't allow the devil to do is win. So you can go over there. You can go over there. The enemy knows what triggers you now. So guess what he's going to do? Go let you go somewhere else and let you get caught. And then he's going to shake you up again. Because he don't he know what it is that's going to make you move. And watch this here. How the what? You're going to bounce around to a few churches. Then the next thing you know, Sunday morning come, you're going to be sitting at the house. Now watch this here. See, the enemy is, y'all hear me here, brother. It's very true. Now he's going to say that I don't need church. I can watch church on TV. Y'all better hear me here. But the Bible tells us to forsake not the assembly of others. Now watch this here. Now you think you come. You at home watching. Service on TV. But all of a sudden, after a while, you get up a little later. Oh, I missed service this morning. It'll be all right. And after a while, you won't even turn the TV on. Tell after the church services don't went up. But I said all this to say this. Let me share something with you. Now the enemy got you out on play for, playing field you by yourself. You don't have nobody to pray for you. You're not getting no word. Now what happens now is you become self-righteous. You build up in your own mind what you think church should be. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all not hearing me here. I, I'm, I'm talking to y'all here. I'm trying to take y'all somewhere. Now, you know, build up in your mind. You're self-righteous. You're full of yourself. Now. They, they, they got God all the way out the equation because you allowed the enemy to step in. But all that brother and sister was trying to do was trying to help save you. You know, it's amazing to me how we only want to receive for certain folk. But I'm a firm believer, sister. The word of God is the word of God. Regardless of who gives it to you. 
Some folks say, well, who preached? They tell them who preached? I'm not going. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. He don't know how to preach. But the folk that say, how many of y'all ever been a preacher? How many of y'all know how, to, how the God uses preachers? But we quit to say, I don't want to hear nothing he got to say. Ask me how I know I used to be that person. There was preachers that I didn't want to hear. And I'm sure there's people that don't want to hear me. But when you become a preacher and have a walk in a preacher's shoes, you understand that I got to do what God tells me to do. And I'm not worried about what folks say. Uh, that's, that's what, that's what y'all do. I, I'm going to hit y'all too. Stop worrying about what people have to say about what you do in God's house. If you're not out of order, you praising God. Go ahead and praise God. Hey, brother, don't nobody know the storms you've been through but you. So if you shout, you got a reason to shout. But see, folk are watching and thinking, oh, what is he doing all that carrying on for? You don't know what I was wrestling with over in the midnight. You don't know what I've been praying for. You don't know what God has answered in my life. And here you are, but still you shouting with me. You sitting over here grumbling and thinking in your mind, what is he acting like that for? There's a true saying when people say, I'll shout if I have to shout all by myself. That's the way it should be. And if I shout by myself when we come together, oh, help me here. Oh, there ought to be a whole lot of shouting going on. Even if you're going through some stuff, if your sister or brother get up and say, let me tell you what God said the Lord and what God has done for me. Even in the midst of your storm, you ought to be shouting for your brother and sister. Oh, that's how you become whole. I asked you early on, I said, how do you want to be made whole? But see, we so caught up with self. Oh, if it don't affect, dig it here. And, and then, I ain't got nothing to do with it. That's them over there. Oh, let me help you here. I'm finna get ready to get out of here short. But even so, sometimes. We said we love the Lord the way we do. But then when we see our brother and sister going through something, we get to say, that's good. Oh, y'all talking to me. Or yeah. get to thinking about it. Oh, they get back. God just punching me. I done heard folks say. Because of what they need. How you know God punched me? You ever thought about it? God might have saw them worthy just like he saw Joe worthy. See, you see how Joe's friends treated him? They told him, man, tonight, you might as well go and cuss God and die. You done did something. Then behind the scenes, they don't know that God said, he's a child of mine. I know what he can, he can help. See, some of y'all are so stuck happened to other folk that would have made you break. But the reason that they didn't break because they know who they belong to. Yeah. See, when you got God up your side, can a devil in hell be nothing to you? Let alone folk. <laughs> but I'm going to get ready to get out of here. And then here's the thing. Just like you see the lame man sit there 38 years. And then he got his blessing and never had to step a foot in the pool. Because when Jesus showed up on the scene, that's all that it took. Some of us are still wrestling with some things that Jesus done said, just give it to me, and I'll make you whole. Just confess with your mouth, and believe with your heart, and I'm going to make you whole. But let me show you here sometimes how we get so complacent. The man didn't have to step in the pool. But what if Jesus would have told him to step in the pool? 